Hey guys, I'm Carl and welcome back to SMA. Today I've got kind of a special sort of video and I'll be honest with you, uh, this video it makes me more nervous than any video I put out since the very first one. The reason for that is is that I'm going to hit a topic that I normally wouldn't do. I tend not to be topical. I try to stay away from politics and the things that are going on in the world because I don't want to be that kind of thing. Um, I think politics tend to divide and that's not the sort of th channel that I would want to run. But today I want to go over the coronavirus, what it means for us, and more importantly, what is the big question that we should be asking. And again, though I don't like talking about things like this, I feel like with a pandemic going around, the title Surviving Middle Age kind of has a whole new meaning. As this crisis has gone on, it has got me thinking a lot about how we should respond to it. What are the things that we should be doing? Um, we get a lot of information from medical experts, from financial experts, from our political leaders, and it can be overwhelming. And my question is, how should we respond? And I keep thinking about the one thing that, the one thing that I think we should be doing, the one big question that we need to be asking. Now, before I get to that one big question, let me clarify this. First of all, you should not listen to me for medical advice. I'm not a doctor, I don't play one on TV or on YouTube, okay? I am not the person that you should be going to for medical advice. So, if what you get out of this is you should take a certain drug or break a quarantine or something like that, then you're getting the wrong message because I am not the guy to listen to for medical advice. Similarly, you should not listen to me about financial situations, okay? I ran our, financial, our finances in my marriage for the first month and I nearly bankrupted us. So, you should not listen to me for financial advice either, okay? I am a YouTuber and I'm not the guy you're gonna go to to Get the information that it's going to change your life and make big life-changing decisions from. Also, let me say that I don't have any political affiliations. I didn't vote in the last two elections. So if you came here looking for me to pick your side of the political spectrum, you're probably going to be deeply disappointed because that's not the kind of guy I am. I tend to be highly suspicious of most politicians and I'm just not a big politics guy. With that out of the way, I want to talk about two things that seem to be hitting us uh, over and over again during the pandemic. And that is one, the health issues, right? We have, I think the, the latest count I saw was 40,000 people have died from this. So this is a very uh, difficult, dangerous situation. Okay, and we want, we want to be careful of that. The other issue that we've got going on are the finances, okay? Uh, a lot of people unemployed, a lot of people who have uh, lost their jobs and are struggling to survive. Frankly, I'm worried about my job from, on a day-to-day -day basis. I think we're, we're, they're basically reviewing it. And as my company's sales continue to go down, the odds of me getting on the unemployment line keep going up. So clearly the financial stuff is something that bothers me. Now today, I'm going to spend most of my time, though, talking about the financial end. And that's not because I don't think the, the medical end is important. Rather, I think it's too important for a guy on YouTube to be talking about who isn't a doctor, okay? So when I look at all the, the articles that are out there about medical things that are going on and how dangerous is it, how infectious is it, what's the mortality rate, those numbers change constantly. The models change constantly. What they think changes constantly. What they did in South Korea is different than what they did on the Princess cruise ship. And so all the numbers change and I don't want to be the guy who gives you bad information. So I think we'll know a lot more about all the medical stuff, you know, six months from now than we do today. And, you know, at that point, then maybe we can start talking about those sorts of things. So I'm going to concentrate on the financial end because I think it's a little more clear cut. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't care about the medical end. So as this pandemic has gone on, my overall writing question has been, what's the plan? What are we trying to do to take care of all the issues? So I was just talking to a friend of mine, and when the first lockdowns came down, they were talking two weeks, and then it was four weeks. Now it's six weeks. 
And as they were rolling these lockdowns out, I think they were kind of responding to the situation, the emergency at hand, and they didn't have a long-term plan. So let me say this, the thing that I want, the thing that I'm gonna be pushing you to ask for from your elected leaders, wherever you are, is I would like to see a plan. I believe that we have these massive um, health issues and we have these massive economical issues. And right now we're kind of dealing with things haphazardly. Uh, okay, we gotta lock things down because we've got you know, these people who are getting sick and people are dying at a, at a high rate, so we got to deal with that. Then over on this end, um, well, people can't just stay home. I guess we'll pass a $2 trillion stimulus package and hope that works, right? I feel like they're quickly responding, or not even quickly responding, but they're responding to a situation um, without really thinking through and having a long-term plan. And that's what I would like to see. So let's take some time. Let's talk about the, the financial issues as we have them today. Now, because I am a YouTuber and I'm not a guy who's got a lot of expertise, what I did was I put together a bunch of links um, so that you can see where I pulled my information from. And then I'm going to be showing some uh, screenshots over here so you can see what I'm, the places where I pulled it from. Uh, these are mainstream outlets, you know, things like New York Times and CNN, uh, things, places that normal people would go to to go find information. Uh, not a lot of small websites, you know, my subscription to tinfoilhat.com is unfortunately expired, so I can't pull stuff from there. Um, so hopefully you can go and look at it and you can see what I'm seeing and you can decide if what, you're see what I'm seeing is accurate. Currently, as we speak, 95% of all Americans are under some form of lockdown. And what this is doing is this is driving us to all-time highs of unemployment. Over the last four or so weeks, we've added 22 million people to the, uh, un the ranks of the unemployed. And this is getting higher as we go along. Uh, probably within the next couple weeks, we're going to be as high as 30 million people. This is higher than we've ever seen before. This is higher, we've added more people to the unemployment line in a faster time than even in the Great Depression. And this is proving to be overwhelming to the unemployment system on a technological end, uh, where people can't uh, even file for unemployment because websites are crashing, phone lines are down. So as we've added these people to the unemployment lines, to the, the highest unemployment we've ever seen in American history, it's having multiple effects. Uh, we're seeing states begin to run out of money. Nearly half of the states are running out of money. Some states will be out of unemployment funds in the next three to four weeks. And this is particularly devastating because nearly 75% of all Americans live check to check. So if we get to a point where the unemployment checks aren't coming, people are going to quickly not have the ability to pay for food, pay rent, um, take care of their loved ones, and that's going to cause some major problems. Uh, normally what would happen in a situation like that when states run out of unemployment money is they would go to the federal government. But we've never had a situation where we've had this many states all at once uh, running out of unemployment funds. So that, became, that becomes a huge problem at the federal level. On the other part of that, we have small businesses. Now, small businesses represent roughly 50% of the employment opportunities inside the United States, give or take. Now, to support small businesses through this, and when we say small businesses, we mean businesses that employ 500 or fewer people. Now, to help small businesses out, what happened was Congress passed in their stimulus package, their $2 trillion stimulus package, they had, as part of that, a $350 billion add-on. And this add-on was there to help small businesses pay their bills, try to keep people off the unemployment lines. Um, when when they started to negotiate this and started to look at it, the experts were saying they were going to need roughly $1 trillion to keep small businesses running for three months. And as it turned out, the experts were pretty close to being right because they ran through that $350 billion in about two weeks. Now, as we speak um, today, I do believe it's the 20th, right? Yes, it is Monday, uh, April 20th. It's in Congress. They're trying to add, I think, another $250 billion on. Maybe it'll be more than that. But again, that add-on 
isn't going to be enough to keep the businesses running because they needed really about a trillion dollars and that would get us to what, $600 billion? Again, don't listen to me for math because my math is terrible. And then the, with the financial stuff, it's not just hurting people on the streets, it's not just hurting businesses, but it's hurting other things as well. For instance, uh, in the medical field, which we would assume in a pandemic, uh, you know, the medical field would be busy, uh, they would, we would need every hand on deck to solve the problem, but what we're finding out is that's not really the case. In the hot spots, definitely. If you're in New York City, you're in Detroit, uh, you're in some of those kinds of places, you're probably super busy and you've got a lot of going on. Um, but in most of the country, we're not seeing that. What happened was that when the lockdown started, they started pushing off elective surgeries. And the elective surgeries are where a lot of hospitals make their money. So now suddenly the hospitals are sitting empty because they didn't want people to come in for elective surgeries, you know, catch the coronavirus, get sick, and continue to pass it on. So they asked people to push that off. But again, this is how hospitals make their money is on these elective surgeries. They're very important. And now without the elective surgeries, we're seeing people being laid off in the medical field at a large, uh, at a large number. According to the New York Times, over 20,000 physicians will be laid off by the end of April due to the coronavirus. It seems like we'd need those physicians, right? According to Vox, prior to the coronavirus outbreak, one in four uh, rural hospitals was in danger of being shut down uh, because of financial issues. So now we say, okay, you can't do these elective surgeries. That's going to put these rural hospitals even further in the hole, and more of them are going to be in real danger of going bankrupt. And again, that's a problem. And the other part of this for the, fine, for the medical industry is that people are putting off these elective surgeries because they can't get to the hospitals, but we're also adding them to the unemployment line. So now we've got 20 to 30 million people who are losing their health insurance and are probably gonna put these off indefinitely, which is a twofold problem, right? Because they're not getting the, the medical attention they need and the hospitals aren't drawing the funds that they need and so it's going to just cycle in on itself. Okay, so that's talking about the financial end. So let's talk about the quarantine end. As I said, it's Monday, April 20th, and we're beginning to see some places start to talk about opening things up, but nobody in the United States really is at this point. So what we're seeing from California, who's really the first state that's really started to talk about this, is they're saying they don't want to have any large group meetings until... Um, they have a vaccine. They just don't feel safe about it. They're concerned about it. They don't want to f the flare up. So no large group meetings till they have a vaccine. So that could be, you know, any time from this spring, if Johnson & Johnson is correct, to maybe more logically next fall. So no large group meetings, gatherings means no Disney, no concerts, no sporting events with fans. Um, maybe no theaters, right? Large group gatherings um, are one of the ways, not only do that we get together, but that we make, we generate a lot of money, right? And so the people who are tied to that are really gonna be hurt by that. And we're seeing things like in Florida, where there are Florida farmers who are only produce, the only produce for places like Disneyland and the resorts and, and the hotels and stuff down there. They have no place to sell their goods because they're all shut down. And they're probably all going to stay shut down for quite a while because people are afraid to travel and the government's not going to want to open all that stuff up. So that that's even puts more even more pressure on the economic system, on the unemployment lines. Um, and we need to figure out how we're going to deal with all this. So as you can see, we're talking long term um, where we're going to be living in a world at least until we have a vaccine, where things aren't going to be what they were a few months ago. Which I understand, right? We, would, we want people to be healthy, we want people to be safe, we don't want people to die unnecessarily, and so we have to take those precautions. But at the same time, we also have massive economic issues, which I think I've laid out, and so now we've got these two things, right? And neither one of them is unimportant, okay? We need people to be healthy. We need people to be safe. You know how hard it is to grow a YouTube channel if your viewers are in the hospital, right? So we need you guys to be taken care of that way. We also need to have the economy working. It doesn't do us any good 
to keep people healthy and safe if we're just going to throw them out on the streets afterwards because they lost their home, right? Or they went unemployed or they went bankrupt because they were in the hospital for the coronavirus, right? So we need both of these things need to work together. It cannot be an either or situation. It has to be both and. And we need our leaders to step up. Now, in general, on this channel, what I've tried to do is I've tried to be kind of uplifting as much as possible, try to show some cool things, some cool places. And I haven't really asked a lot of you, okay? But I am going to do that. I'm gonna ask that you ask your elected leaders, ask the media people you might know in your life to push the elected leader, your elected leaders to start to come up with a comprehensive plan. I, I really want to see us get past the, okay, we're gonna put out this fire, we're gonna put out that fire. I would like to see some of our elected officials come out and say, okay, here's the problems that we have. We have these hospital issues and coronavirus issues, and we have these economic issues, and here's our plan for dealing with them. I think it's really time um, that our elected leaders step up. You know, when, when Roosevelt dealt with the Great Depression, he started off with his, all we have to fear is fear itself speech. Then he continued on with his New Deal, the fireside chats, all these things that he did to help people feel safe and comfortable. And I think we need that kind of thing going forward. We need somebody out there to say, okay, here's the plan. And I don't think they're capable of doing that unless we ask them to do that. Right now, I think they're happy enough to just solve whatever problem is directly in front of them instead of dealing with the, the problem holistically. So, one more time. I am a, I'm not asking you to break quarantine, to go out and become a protester. I'm not asking you to um, go hide in your basement or anything like that. I'm not asking any extreme uh, actions out of you. Rather, simply write a letter, write an email, right? To our elected leaders, we need to, to somehow get them to think about the situation, let them know that we are concerned, and hopefully get some answers, concerns as to what life looks like, and what they're gonna do to make sure that we're gonna be healthy, we're gonna be safe, and we're gonna have our homes afterwards, we're not gonna go bankrupt, we're gonna have food on the table. Um, I think our elected leaders owe that to us. So, I have never asked anybody to share the video that I post on YouTube, but if you find this um, interesting, if you find this valuable, please share it on your social media things. Um, I think it's time that we need to, to think through this stuff, and I hope you're with me on this. I hope I didn't offend anybody. I hope I didn't encourage anybody to do anything crazy. Um, Take care of yourself. Praying for the entire country here. Bye.